Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to finish up our discussion of matrix transformations by talking about some geometric examples. So what I mean by this is that we can think about what a matrix A does graphically to a vector X. So what is that matrix A actually doing to the vector? How is it moving it or in what way is it transforming it? So this is going to be easiest for us to visualize when we're in two dimensional spaces. So if we have a matrix transformation T that starts in R2 and goes to R2. So this is easiest because these are the dimensions that we can draw in an easy way. I just wanna mention that three blue, one brown has some incredible videos looking at matrix transformations in both two dimensions and three dimensions. And the animations that are in those videos are really incredible and totally worth a watch. What I'm going to show here is what you might do on your own if you're a student doing this topic and trying to make sense of what happens graphically or geometrically with a matrix transformation. All right, so before we jump into the examples, let me just go through some of the basic algebraic work we're going to be doing to make sure we're on the same page. So we're going to be considering transformations t of x equals a times x, where t goes from r2 to r2. So what this looks like is that we're taking t of an input vector, x, y, and I'm specifically going to be thinking about it as an x and a y, since we're going to be graphing these in two dimensions. Then what t does is it takes the matrix A, which might look like A, B, C, D, and it's multiplying it by the vector x, y. And I like to think of this matrix vector multiplication as taking linear combination of the columns. So we're taking x of the first column plus y of the second column. So you might be used to an algorithm where you do ax plus by as the first row and then cx plus dy as the second row, but I'm going to be doing it instead as this linear combination first to really help us think about doing addition with vectors. So we're scaling the vector ac by x and adding it to the vector bd scaled by y. And then we're going to be looking at the special vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, the basis vectors. And so just remember that if we take t of the first basis vector, we get the first column of A. And if we do t of the second basis vector, we get the second column of A. So we'll be going through all this math in steps when we look at the examples, but I just want to highlight it here in a more abstract way. So for our example, and for the rest of this video, what we're going to do is look at four different matrices and describe the matrix transformations that correspond geometrically. And so let's look at these four different cases. So these all involve ones and zeros in different positions, and we're going to see the different effects they have. Obviously, you don't have to have just ones and zeros, you can have different numbers too, but I'm just considering these really basic cases to give us a sense for what is possible. So let's start with our case A. In this one, our matrix is 1, 0, 0, 1. So what we're going to do in all of these examples is look at what happens to the basis vectors when we input them into the transformation. I'm also going to give us some axes here and draw our basis vectors on them. So the dark colored one is 1, 0, and the lighter colored one is 0, 1. Now, when we input 1, 0 into this matrix transformation, we're doing our matrix A times 1, 0. You should remember this should just give us the first column, but I'll write it out. So we do 1 times the first column, 1, 0, plus 0 times the second column, 0, 1. And this outputs just 1, 0. So here, our input and our output are the same, and so the transformation didn't do anything to this vector, it stays the same. We can repeat this process for the second basis vector. So when we input 0, 1, we're going to be doing 0 of the first column plus 1 of the second column, and so we're just getting that second column, 0, 1. So this transformation had an input of 0, 1, and it gave us the same output. So this stays the same as well. So for any vector we put in, you can try another one if you'd like. We're going to just get the same vector out. So this transformation has a special name. It's called the identity transformation because it just sends vectors to themselves. So it keeps things as they are. It's an identity matrix. So, okay, this one's a little boring. Let's look at the next one. 
So for our next matrix, the first column is 0, 1, and the second column is 1, 0. And again, we're going to look at what happens to the basis vectors. So as we input our first basis vector, 1, 0, we're going to be taking 1 of the first column plus 0 of the second column. And so this is just our first column. So the transformation here moves the vector 1, 0 to the vector 0, 1. I will show this animation in a moment, but let's also look at the second basis vector. So our second basis vector will get multiplied by our matrix A. So as we input the second basis vector, we're going to be taking 0 of the first column of A plus 1 of the second column of A. And this is just giving me 1, 0. So this transformation moves the vector 0, 1 to the vector 1, 0. So as we look at this on the graph, our two basis vectors are switching positions. All right, pretty cool. So just from that, I'm not totally sure what this transformation is doing. So let's take another vector and look at what happens. So let's also look at a third vector to negative one. Basically, anytime you try the two basis vectors first to see what's happening, if you can't really tell what the movement is, I suggest taking at least another vector, if not more, and seeing what happens to those. So I picked this pretty randomly. Let's look at the vector to negative one. So the transformation t takes two negative one and does a times the vector. So we're going to be taking two of the first column minus one of the second column. Then when I do this math, I'm getting zero minus one for my first row and two minus zero for my second row. And so this is outputting the vector negative one, two. So you can see here, we basically swapped the X and the Y, right? So two and negative one, those positions swapped. And so when we graph this, we're looking now at the vector negative one, two. So what's happening here is that this matrix transformation is reflecting across the line X equals Y. It's swapping the X and Y positions for all of the vectors. Okay, pretty cool. So when we do a matrix transformation with this particular matrix, we're doing a reflection across the line y equals x. All right, so those are our first two examples. We have two more to look at. So in this case, we have part C. Our first column of A is 1, 0, and the second column of A is 1, 1. Again, we'll start with these basis vectors and see what happens to them, and then pick another vector to try. So starting with one, zero, I'm doing one of the first column plus zero of the second column, and so I'm getting one, zero. So for this first basis vector, it stayed the same. So the transformation took that basis vector and outputted the same thing. Now let's try the second basis vector. So now we are doing zero of the first column plus one of the second column. And so we're getting one, one. So this transformation moved the vector zero, one to the vector one, one. So just looking at it, it kind of seems like it like tilted it on its side. It sort of like fell over into this new position. But let's see another vector to try to make sense of what's going on. So let's try T of negative two, three. I picked this vector because it fits on the graph, but you could pick really any vector you wanted. So in this case, we're doing negative two of the first column plus three of the second column. When I add these together, I'm getting negative two plus three in the first row and zero plus three in the second row. So this gives me the vector one, three. So this transformation moved the vector negative two, three to one, three. So we can graph that here. It took the vector and sort of moved it over to the right, maybe like tilted it over. This transformation is a special kind of transformation called a shear. So in this case, anything on the X axis is fixed. So the X values aren't impacted at all, which should make sense looking at the first column of A. It's just one zero, which is the basis vector itself. But then any vector that has a non-zero y component is going to move. So all other vectors will move and it moves in this way that's called a shear. All right, let's look at one more matrix transformation. So this should look familiar to part B, except we have a negative one in that second column. So again, we're going to look at our basis vectors. 
For our first basis vector, we're taking one of the first column plus zero of the second column. So we're getting zero, one. So just that first column out. And this means that the transformation moves the vector one, zero to the vector zero, one. All right, let's try this with our second basis vector. So now we're taking zero of the first column plus one of the second column. And this outputs negative one, zero. So the transformation moves the vector zero, one to the vector negative one, zero. So you can see here that we're rotating those vectors into their new positions. Let's confirm this rotation by looking at a third vector. I'm going to try the vector two, negative two. You could pick a different vector if you'd like. So in this case, we're taking two of the first column minus two of the second column. When I put this together, I'm getting zero plus two as my first row and two minus zero as my second row. And that final answer is two, two. So this is moving the vector to negative two to the vector two, two. We can see here that the vector is being rotated from the fourth quadrant up to the first quadrant. And so specifically, this is a rotation counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So all of the vectors are being rotated counterclockwise and they're being rotated by an angle of 90 degrees. All right, so those are our four examples that we looked at. What is actually happening to them geometrically isn't always super easy to describe, but we can do our best by moving individual vectors or by assigning names to the different types of transformations. So I just wanna give an overview of some of the common matrix transformations, specifically some that look a little more general than the ones we did here. So first we did the identity matrix. That one is always one, zero, zero, one. This will do nothing to the vectors, it just keeps them the same. If we wanna move past just having inputs that are one and zero, we could have a matrix that looks like alpha zero in the first column and zero beta in the second column. And what this is going to do is to scale the X component by alpha and the Y component by beta. Then the more general version of a rotation is the following. So the first column is cosine theta, sine theta, and the second column is negative sine theta, cosine theta. And this matrix transformation rotates counterclockwise by theta. So I'd recommend that you take this and go through some work multiplying it by different vectors to see what happens. Basically the first column is taking that basis vector of one zero and moving it to the point cosine sine, which you can think of as a unit circle value where the X is cosine and the Y is sine. Then what happens to the Y component or the second basis vector is a little more complicated, but it's moving it to negative sine cosine. So that's just to rotate that second basis vector properly. All right. So those are some matrix transformations, looking at them geometrically. Just remember, you can always choose different vectors to look at, to input into the transformation and see what happens. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.